Hi, in this tutorial, we will zoom into e-discovery topic, what it is, why it is different on on-prem and uh, cloud environment, and what are the things we need to take care of um, whenever we have e-discovery request. This discussion will be followed by some practice questions on this topic. So e-discovery is the process of searching, identification, collection, and securing the electronic data and the records to ultimately be used in either criminal or the civil legal proceedings in the court. Um, with the traditional data centers, because everything uh, is easy to, to collect and identify, um, is you know easier and less complex in comparison with the cloud environment because the physically the systems are known and can easily be isolated or even the brought offline and preserved. Whenever there is a request or requirement for the e-discovery, um, it is substantially easier to determine the scope and systems involved because they will be all under the tight control and typically on-premise with the well-known configurations and the systems involved. While um, when it comes to the cloud environment, all the systems and data these are virtualized and because of this additional challenges and the complexity um, exist within the cloud environment and uh, with this this information is scattered all over the virtual machines all over the different locations and and uh, the storage devices um, which may be dispersed across the different uh, physical data centers and the jurisdictions as well so that becomes the another challenge here um, when it comes to the e-discovery. So what are the things that we should uh, take care of when it comes to uh, when, uh, when it comes to the e-discovery or we are serving the e-discovery request? Uh, so e-discovery is uh, the cloud e-discovery considerations um, that concerns how the information will be placed on the legal hold or how the information in the cloud will be accessed or reviewed and produced in the litigation or regulatory request. Particularly, the discovery need not to be limited to the documents known at the outset uh, to be admissible as an evidence in the um, uh, court of law. Instead, the discovery will apply to all the documents reasonably calculated to lead uh, to the admissible evidences. Um, the, the cloud service providers um, should publish their policies, their requirements, their capabilities to meet the legal obligations um, for the customers to check whether it can meet the e-discovery requirements and they, they, they need to uh, consider that um, how the data during the collection, during serving the e-discovery, how the position and custodies and controls are going to apply um, you know when it comes to the uh, to the e-discovery data and uh, what all cloud applications and environment are supporting the e-discovery they need to uh, check um, during the um, during the um, assessment that what is the searchability they have in their environment uh, do they have some kind of e-discovery tools which can support to collect, to identify, or to preserve that data? Uh, do we have SLA uh, with the cloud service provider um, and the customer? So between both these two parties, there has to be the strong SLA, uh, the contract um, to support, to provide these, you know, to serve this e-discovery um, tools. Preservation, uh, what are the methods to, to preserve um, this kind of uh, data, this kind of uh, uh, evidences, data retention laws, uh, they need to consider that, uh, you know, um, they need to serve uh, to, in order to support the e-discovery in the different, um, different regions of the world. Uh, there are different laws and um, there are different retention laws because sometimes the data might be required for example for the income tax um, and for income tax the, the, the laws can be different in the different countries. You may need the data after 10 years, you may need the data after 5 years for example. So to serve this kind of e-discovery 
uh, you need to know you need to serve all all um, all these retention laws and record keeping uh, obligations the collection uh, data of course uh, during the collection uh, uh, it might happen that the data might get changed but you need to support some uh, kind of uh, mechanisms uh, to avoid um, this kind of uh, modifications or accidental changes during the collection direct access to um, to the data who should have access who should not have access to such kind of data so that you can avoid uh, the tampering or any kind of modifications native production authentication so authentication is is something um, if the data cannot be authenticated it cannot be considered as you know admissible evidence in a court of law because uh, this barring any um, extenuating uh, circumstances um, the cloud does change uh, how the chain of custody is ensured so you need to ensure the chain of custody of course uh, and uh, there has to be some ways um, to authenticate that evidence. Cooperation between the provider and the client in the e-discovery that is the most important and has to be agreed during the SLA and the contract. Um, response to the, uh, to the search warrant. So it is, it is also important that to how to respond to the search warrant if you have uh, what kind of data it might need and uh, how you are going to um, search this kind of uh, serve this kind of search warrants if, if that data is supposed to be searched remember um, for, for forensics like uh, the bit by bit imaging of the cloud data resource is generally difficult or impossible because um, you might you might see some questions in the exam that how to um, uh, how to collect the data and how to collect the bit by bit um, you know um, copy of of that data to present in the in the court of law it is it is very difficult or even impossible to uh, to be done in in the cloud for obvious security reasons providers are reluctant to allow access to their hardware or even their data centers particularly uh, in a multi tenant environment because the, the search warrant or maybe the e-discovery request is for a particular customer but the cloud service providers are, are, are sharing the same infrastructure with the other customers as well so they cannot share uh, the, the, the entire environment so uh, the multi-tenant in the multi-tenant environment it is very difficult to share the, uh, the, uh, the uh, entire environment to uh, to, to the to such kind of request even in the private cloud forensics may be extremely difficult and uh, and the client may need to notify uh, opposing the council or the court of these kind of limitations let's take a look on some questions in a cloud environment who is responsible for collecting the data in response to an e-discovery order so you have uh, the e-discovery order from the court of law. Now, who is responsible here? So remember, uh, in the cloud environment, it is not just one person responsibility, um, not even uh, the, the cloud uh, customer, the cloud provider, or the data owner. So it is a joint responsibility, right? And the cloud customer and the cloud provider both are remain responsible to provide or to, to serve such uh, e-discovery orders or requests okay so remember the cloud customer and the cloud provider both are responsible for e-discovery orders next is your organization has just uh, been served with an e-discovery order because the organization has moved to the cloud environment, what is the biggest challenge when it comes to the full compliance with any discovery order? So uh, look at the options here. Uh, we have virtualization, data discovery, multi-tenancy, resource pooling. Uh, uh, we have uh, the virtualization. This is not a challenge. This is, um, I would say, this is the feature 
uh, in the cloud. Uh, so, this is not an option. Multi-tenancy is again a feature, uh, resource pooling is again a feature in the cloud. So, it, data discovery is the correct answer and the biggest challenge to serve uh, the, the e-discovery order. Which of the following ISO standard pertains to the e-discovery process and the best practices? Um, in the cloud, when people are um, implementing the e-discovery processes, they need to adhere to some kind of a standard so that they are in compliance with, uh, with the uh, global standards uh, because they need to comply with some global standards. Uh, so that they are not just dependent on some kind of regional requirements and they are supporting the e-discovery uh, globally and uh, in line with the global standard and processes. So here um, ISO uh, 17789, it, is, it provides a reference architecture for the cloud computing and it is focused on the general cloud computing design and implementation. So this is certainly not um, not for e discovery. ISO 27001, it is focused on the general security principles and the best practices. So, this is also not um, exactly the one. ISO 17788, this provides the terminology and the definitions for the cloud computing in general. ISO 27000. Um, 050. So, this is the standard that is purely focused on the e-discovery processes and how best to approach an order. The goal of the standard is to establish the common terminologies and the uh, given an overview of the e-discovery process and uh, then provide the guidance and provide the practices for conducting the data collection including this discovery preservation and the analysis of course. From a legal perspective, data that is uh, covered under the e-discovery falls into the three different categories. Which of the following is not one of those three? Um, remember here, um, from the court of law um, perspective, when the data is being uh, represented in, um, in the court, the possession, how the data was possessed, uh, it is very important um, how the data um, is, is you know stored, uh, where the data was stored, how the access was um, access control was in place on on the, on the data, uh, what all controls are are uh, implemented to protect that data, uh, whose custody was to uh, to keep this data. So, chain of custody, control and position, these are really very important aspects of the e-discovery. Um, shared, it is not one of them. So, this is the correct answer here. Remember, not one of those three. So, shared is not one of those three. Um, remember. The possession, control and custody, so these are the uh, three different categories which are covered under the e-discovery. Okay, this question can be asked differently. You may see some different options, you may see some kind of different keywords in the questions, but remember um, possession, control and custody, these are the three different uh, e-discovery uh, categories. Your company has just been served with an e-discovery order to collect event uh, data and other pertinent information from your um, application during a specific period of time to be used as the potential evidence for a court proceedings. Remember, this is the keyword here to be used as potential evidence for a court proceeding. Which of the following apart from ensuring that you collect all the pertinent data would be the most important consideration okay so we need to uh, we need to remember that these are the keywords here um, 
So let's take a look on the options. So we have encryption, chain of custody, compression, um, and the confidentiality. So when a company is dealing with the e-discovery orders, the most important consideration is the chain of custody because this pertains to the official legal proceedings the chain of custody documents everyone uh, who has uh, had the position of the data in what format and for what reason uh, for the data to be admissible for the legal proceedings the chain of custody is vital it is very important in showing that nothing has been tampered with and that everyone in the position of the data can be questions questioned and the investigated if that is required while there are other options so here the correct answer is the chain of custody there are other options like encryption encryption is is you know may be required may be part of the e discovery you may want to store uh, the data in the encrypted form but it is not very important for this part to be used as the potential evidence for the court proceeding. So encryption is not that important for uh, the court's proceeding. Compression, it is not um, required for the preservation or not even for submitting as an evidence in the court. Uh, even the confidentiality, of course, that data is supposed to be uh, supposed to be confidential, but may not be a primary factor for the e-discovery while the the most important factor of course the chain of custody is i hope it is uh, it is very clear uh, concept now the e discovery from the exam point of view with this thank you so much for watching the video thank you